So I want to start by uh, talking specifically about the type of attention that I'm interested in what I'm studying, and that would be selective visual attention to features, and that would be studied normally in a task structure that looks like this. So the subject is cued at the beginning of a task. In this case, it's with an auditory cue for a particular object type. And then they're shown this challenging uh, visual stimulus, and they need to determine if the given object was in the visual stimulus or not. On alternative trials, instead of hearing this word about the object, they're just played a white noise stimulus. And so on the trials that are cued, they're able to deploy attention to a particular object type, whereas on the white noise stimulus, they're not able to deploy attention. And comparing the performance in these two different types of trials can tell you the performance benefits that come with being able to deploy attention. And so at the bottom, you could see that uh, performance is better in terms of hit rate, detection sensitivity, and reaction time when an uh, attentional cue is given. So studies that uh, record from neurons at the same time that these kinds of tasks are being performed have discovered many neural correlates of attention. And the main one that's important for this work is called the feature similarity gain model of attention. And this is just a general theory that summarizes a lot of experimental findings. And it basically says that neurons that prefer the features that are being attended will have their activity enhanced, whereas neurons that don't prefer the attended features will have their activity depressed. And within that, the effect is multiplicative. So if you are attending to a preferred feature, the response to all different stimuli will be scaled up multiplicatively. Another neural correlate of feature-based attention is that it's spatially global, and what that means is that even if the feature attention task is happening in a particular location in the visual field, neurons that respond to that feature will be modulated across the visual field. Another finding is that these effects tend to be stronger at later areas. So neurons in V4, for example, so show stronger attentional modulation than neurons in V1. So we have these neural correlates of attention and these behavioral correlates or performance enhancements that come from it. How can these things be connected in a model? And for that, I'm turning to convolutional neural networks. As we heard, there are um, convolutional neural networks are state of the art for performing visual object recognition and other challenging visual tasks. And their architecture is inspired by the visual system. So in particular, uh, each convolutional layer has multiple what are called feature maps, and these feature maps result from applying a given filter to the layer below. And each unit in these 2D feature maps corresponds to uh, the activity that results from applying the filter to a specific spatial location. So there's this inherent uh, retinotopy, so to say, uh, built into the architecture of these networks. And then stacking these convolutions with pooling layers leads to an effect where uh, units later on in the network uh, correspond to more complex features in the input space and have larger receptive field sizes, just like in the visual system. And then studies that have actually directly compared the representations in these models and in the brain have found that indeed the representations are uh, more aligned if you look at later layers in this uh, model and later areas in the visual system. So taken together, the fact that these networks can perform complicated tasks as well as have neural representations that are reminiscent of the brain, they seem like a good uh, starting point to explore the relationship between neural changes and performance changes. And so that's what I've done, particularly with respect to the neural changes that come with attention. So how can you apply attention in these networks? Well, as I said, the feature similarity gain model of attention says that modulation should be uh, in proportion to the tuning of the individual cell. And so the first thing that you have to do is get tuning maps for the individual uh, units in this network. And so what I'm showing here are some example tuning curves across 20 different object categories. And this is just done by putting in different object category images into the network and recording uh, the responses of different feature maps. And then those values are normalized so that positive values mean that the feature map prefers a given category and therefore when attention is deployed to that category, that feature map activity should be scaled upward. And then negative values mean that when attention is deployed to that category, that feature map's activity should be scaled downward. So that's how attention is modeled in this network. And um, all of the units in a given feature map are modulated in the same way because as I said, feature attention is spatially global. So then this modulation to the feature map activity can be done at any of the layers in the network. And in the network that I'm using, there are 13 total convolutional layers. 
So uh, in studying attention, usually you have to present the subject with a challenging visual task to see the effects of attention, and these networks are good at the task that they were trained on, so we present them this more challenging task, <coughs> which involves two overlaid images as an input to the network, and then the task of the network is to determine if a given object category is present in these merged images. And so the final layer of the network, which normally does 1,000-way object classification, is replaced by a series of binary classifiers for each of the individual categories. And so without attention, this network performs at around 64% accuracy on this task. So what happens when attention is applied? Well, applying attention at different layers in the network individually uh, leads to substantial increases in performance, particularly if attention is applied at the uh, last layers of the network. So applying uh, attention at layer at the 13th convolutional layer gives an increase of 20 percentage points in uh, performance on this task. Interestingly, uh, the strength of attention is a free parameter in the model, and if we compare the performance enhancements that are observed in data using the experiment that I showed in the first slide or other similar experiments, the performance increase, the magnitude of performance increase that is observed experimentally can be achieved in the model using modulation of firing rates that is around 6 to 11 percent. And that modulation of firing rates is in line with what's observed in neural modulations in the data. So the tuning values say um, how the individual feature maps respond to two categories, but they don't necessarily say anything about the causal relationship between feature map activity and classification. So because this is a deep net and we can uh, perform certain modulations and analysis with it, what we've done is calculate these gradient values, which are calculated via backpropagation, and they determine how a feature map's activity should be modulated in order to uh, classify a given image as being of a given category. So this is saying if you have a positive gradient value, then the uh, activity of that feature map should go up if you want to classify it as a given category. Um, and so here are three examples of different feature maps tuning curves in green and these like gradient value curves in purple. And you can see that there's varying levels of correlation between these sets of values. And here is showing the mean correlation across all layers in the network. And so you can see that the correlation between these tuning values and these gradient values increases as you go deeper in the network, but it's still, uh, it's still fairly modest. And what that means is that there are feature maps that resp respond strongly to a category, yet aren't, according to this measure, causally related to classifying an image as that category, and even sometimes are inversely related to classifying it as that category. So these uh, gradient values are similar but not the same as the tuning values. So what happens if attention is applied according to these values? Well, you can see that the gradient values are better able to enhance performance at um, medium layers in the network, but they reach the same level of performance as the tuning values at later layers, which suggests that the tuning values actually uh, increase performance perhaps as much as could be expected. It may seem that some of these findings are specific to uh, category-based attention because this network was uh, trained to do object ca classification. So we use a simpler model that is meant to detect oriented grading. So instead of binary classifiers for different categories, there's just binary classifiers for different orientations. And they're shown, the network has shown images with two orientations. And so on this task, without uh, attention, the performance is around 60%. And then attention is again applied by creating orientation tuning curves and applying attention according to those values. Uh, and when that happens, you actually see a very similar pattern of results. So it still is the later layers in the network uh, where attention is most effective at enhancing performance on this task. And again, the gradient values perform better at earlier layers. To get a sense uh, for why the later layers still perform best in, in this task, um, we did a recording setup. And so here, all of the uh, activity of all the layers in the network is being recorded while attention is applied to different layers individually. And so the color coding says which layer attention was applied at. 
And these uh, values are essentially a measure of how much the activity resembles the feature similarity gain model of attention. So this is saying that you would expect to have an increase when your most preferred orientation is attended and a decrease when your least preferred is attended. And so that's an intercept greater than one and a negative slope. And so obviously at the layers that the attention is applied, you see this positive intercept and negative slope because the attention was designed to mimic the feature similarity gain model. But these effects fall off very quickly. And so applying attention according to the tuning values this early in the network isn't able to impact the classifier later on. However, when you apply attention later, the effects are still present. Interestingly, the uh, gradients have kind of the opposite effect. When you apply attention according to these gradient values, you see uh, the similarity to the feature similarity gain model increase as the activity changes propagate through the network. So the gradients have kind of found the same solution as the feature similarity gain model, and they're able to uh, have it happen at the final layer even if attention is applied earlier. A somewhat competing model of how attention works is called feature matching, and this says that the activity of a neuron is enhanced if the attended stimulus is in the receptive field regardless of whether the neuron prefers uh, the attended stimulus. And so that's at odds with the feature similarity gain model. And what this shows is that that kind of feature matching behavior actually can emerge when the feature similarity gain model is applied in an earlier layer. So this is saying how many um, feature maps show this feature matching behavior, and that number grows as you get farther and farther from where the attention was applied. So this could help explain some disparities in the literature about exactly how neurons are modulated with attention. Um, a lot of tasks in the literature aren't necessarily these kind of uh, detection tasks. They have a cross-modal component to them, and so for example, uh, the animal may be told to attend to uh, dots moving in a certain direction, but then the actual task is to respond when a color change happens in those dots. And so that would be a slightly different setup because you're attending to motion but reading out color. And to mimic that kind of task in this network, we've used these same uh, oriented grading stimulus, but now the task of the network is to read out the color of the stimulus that has the attended orientation. And so attention in this case is still applied according to orientation tuning values. Nothing about color tuning is used in this, um, in this task. And yet when you apply attention according to these orientation tuning values, uh, you still see an enhanced performance in reading out the color of the attended stimulus. So this um, has implications for the idea of object-based attention, which says once you attend to a stimulus, you enhance the features, all of the features that that stimulus has. And I think a lot of times that's assumed to require kind of recurrent processing, but even in this purely feed-forward model, you can have this more object-based attention. So to conclude, uh, convolutional neural networks are well positioned to test the relationship between uh, neural changes and performance changes because they perform a task and have realistic neural representations. And I've shown here that using attention that is inspired by the feature similarity gain model, which is observed biologically, leads to performance increases uh, in these networks. Interestingly, these gradient values are also equally effective and more effective at earlier layers. And so this leads to the question, um, is the brain actually targeting neurons according to tuning? or is it targeting it according to some more complicated thing like these gradient values? The literature isn't quite precise enough in the relationship between tuning and attentional modulation to answer that definitively. Um, and these performance enhancements occur for a variety of tasks. The same general procedure works for many different tasks and also uh, spatial attention tasks, which I didn't have time to show. And we can use recordings uh, a la neuroscience to help understand how these uh, changes propagate through these large and complex networks. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you have time for two questions. Um, is, uh, is the kind of attention that you're using in your network comparable to the kind of, of attention that machine learning people uh, generally use, like the kinds of that's used in uh, sequence to sequence or neural machine translation? In a way, yeah, certainly. I mean, the idea that you're kind of amplifying the signal of a particular subset of 
the stimulus that's incoming, I think that that is similar. The idea here is that you're pre-cued about what you're attending to, whereas in, in that situation, that's obviously kind of a dynamic process that's being determined by the translation or whatever else it's being used for. And so in, in many ways, that's like a far more interesting and complex use of attention, um, but it's obviously a lot harder than to relate it to experimental data. Um, so that, that was cool how you were using the model to say, look, I can't, there's two possible ways of implementing attention. You talked about the gradient method versus this preferred tuning method. And you said the experimental data weren't strong enough to tell you which is going on. But the challenge would be, can you take, take the model and say, what should, what's the optimal experiment to be done if this is something you've thought about? You know, do the, you know, have a monkey do X, record an area Y, and if 2D, is that something that you've thought about? Or is sort of something I think an experimentalist might get excited about? Yeah, I think, um, Definitely recording from multiple areas at once and seeing if there's an alignment between, you know, activating neurons with certain tuning at one layer and if they activate certain other neurons with similar tuning at the next layer is important because this model kind of shows that there isn't that strong of an alignment. Um, but obviously a lot of those kinds, the, the type of experiment that would be needed, I don't think is possible at, at this time. So it's hard to say what would be a great experiment other than just more fine-tuned characterization of the tuning of the neurons and how that relates to how they're modulated by attention. Thank you very much.